Hello and welcome everybody to the third day of the group stage in Red Bull Volo 5 over here on the B stream. We will have a match between Bars and Dogao. You could say that uh, whoever loses this one is pretty much out of the tournament. So far, both players uh, have ended up their first two days with defeats. Dogao fell to the Viper 2-1 and, and then fell to Taro 2-0. Whereas for Bars, he lost uh, to both MBL and Slam in a 2-0 fashion. And uh, based on what we are seeing from the other matches and based on the overall scoreboard, it very much seems like whoever loses this set will have uh, very little chance, if not any, to get to the quarterfinals. With me is Ornlu, as we'll take a look at this best of three over here. This is really hard because uh, Dogao came in as a player that I thought could go pretty deep into the tournament. So when I just looked at the lineup, I said, okay, Dogao has the potential to get to like core finals level or so. Especially if you go back to the previous major tournament, Empire Wars Duo 2, Dogao played like an absolute beast. So I definitely expected a little bit more from him. He didn't get easy opponents. So like we saw him playing against Viper in the opening set, and Viper even defeated Hera, so he got a very much in-shape Viper, and yesterday he got defeated very, very easily by Taro. The thing I would like to highlight for these two players both, though, and I think this contributes to the fact that they are both uh, winless so far, is that neither of them had an awful lot of time to prepare. So, these are two players that got in uh, as the last two additions, and this is where we have to mention that the reason why we have uh, this stream existing is because the main event was expanded from 12 players to 14. These two were the players that were added late, so obviously they are the players that had the least amount of time to prepare. Exactly, and sorry guys. Indeed, I wasn't muted, but uh, OBS decided that, uh, you know what, let's just not detect Let's just not detect a microphone, even though I literally have three installed. But uh, yeah, we should be good right now. Uh, and yes, these guys are the, you know, the, oh, hey, uh, tournament's being added. Uh, um, uh, uh, uh. So they are honestly kind of just being thrown in to the deep end, so to say. That said, I still do have to favor Dogao just in terms of tournament experience. Yeah, he hasn't had the results so far, but he's had really tough opponents. And I think that the overall just level of play, the level of finesse that he will show is just a little bit higher than what Barls has. That said, Barls has had a lot of really strong performances recently himself, and I think that this could actually go either way. Yeah, this could go either way. If you asked me before this tournament, I probably would have said Dogao. But Bars, uh, he definitely has the skill set to surprise the opponents over here. Obviously, it's an uphill battle for Bars. So that's not even a question. Like, you look at the scoreboard and say, hey, he hasn't even won a single game, let alone a single set. But obviously, he's playing against the best players in the world. And if you look at the lineup of players, basically, all of the other players have uh, significant achievements in past 1v1 tournaments, whereas for Bars, he's still sort of the newcomer to this 1v1 uh, tournament thingy. This is, I think, his second S-tier tournament that he participated in only in the main event. Yeah, the first one, in case you guys don't remember, was uh, the previous Hidden Cup, where he did lose in the first round, I believe, to ACCM, 2-1, uh, to one, I want to say, if uh, my memory goes back that far. So... Yes, he hasn't had the, the story to pass that Dogao has, but on the other hand, there have been only a few S-tier 1v1 tournaments this year that are not Red Bull, and, well, he made it to the, the last RM1, and he's played in plenty of smaller tournaments, and 
Let's see if he can uh, put some sh uh, some points on the board today, because Doga has at least taken a game. Whereas Burles Indeed, has not. We have to highlight that there is additional prize money for each match win as well. So that's something that is worth considering. That even if he doesn't get to the quarterfinals, you will still get a considerable amount of money. We talked about this one, especially for Bars, who basically had very limited career earnings in competitive age vampires. Um, basically, every single game he wins here is already a massive gift because obviously he is uh, the player that probably has the hardest time in this competition. Yeah, exactly. I still think that he can he can make it happen though. And he definitely can. I I, I hope that uh, we're going to be seeing a close set. Ah, here we go. Just as I say that. We're going to be getting into game number one here on Runestones. And ah, they are right in it already. And we have an interesting civilization matchup over here. Dogao is picking Huns and Bars is picking Kumans. If you remember the infographic from the launch of the stream, Huns is Bars' favorite civilization according to what he said. So, we will see how he deals with his favorite civilization in the opponent's hand. Indeed, we have, uh, as I call them, the Western Step duo. As we'll have Barls here in the yellow as the Cumans to the northwest of the map in the yellow and to the southeast-ish in the red as the Huns will be Dogao. Now, I do know that Dogao, he loves his civs that are flexible in terms of being able to go for both strong cav ar ar options and cav... Archer options, archer options, lots of variety. He loves those with good eco bonuses and lots of variety, and so it's no surprise that Huns are a pick for him. Humans are an interesting one, though, from Barls. We haven't seen them a ton on Runestones. They've mostly, mostly been played on uh, maps like Aftermath, so let's see what they've got going for them here on uh, what is essentially Arabia. Indeed. The tricky thing here with Kumans is that uh, your bonus of being able to pump out... Uh either double range archers right at the beginning or stable and range usually matters when the players are closer to each other because like at this point if you go for stable and range it still takes quite a lot of time to walk through the map with your archers so that little advantage that you're getting is not as impactful as it could possibly be on other maps exactly and we already have first blood in this game as barl's able to surround and kill the scout of dogao did not lose a single villager just yet, but and the scouts are running around. Quick balls have to be on point. This guy seems to be a little bit out of his way. Scout's trying to block the villager on the way to the town center, but he will escape. And we already have the defensive watchtower forced out for Dogao, so that's already something of a win here for Barls. That definitely is a win. Although, we have to keep in mind that Huns usually love to play 1TC, especially if it's triple range cav archers. So it's not the end of the world for uh, Dogao over here. Dogao's got that mindset that if there is any limited chance that you could lose your gold, you go for a defensive tower. So he really needs to make sure that he gets that one up, otherwise that goldman is very exposed. And I talked to this, or talked to him about this one as... Uh, we will have Bars being the aggressor here throughout the start oh, of this game. He made it into the wood line of Dogao in the back of the base. Looks like the palisade was destroyed and one villager going down already. Scout's going to be trying to rush down this other lady over here and she will bite the dust. Remember, human scouts are going to be 5% faster in feudal age and every little bit helps as the much less mobile army of Dogao is just struggling to catch up to these nimble scouts. And this is why this Kuman opening could work nicely for Bars. Because he could add an archer range early alongside his stable, so he could go for a couple of skirms. So, at this point, he just wants to use the mobility of the scouts to raid, and just basically go for a skirmisher defense against the archer opening of the opponent. Plus, you also have to keep in mind that Kumans will have more health on their pal side walls, which means that uh, he's got some additional safety should he finish his walls, which is not something that he's doing. So, looks like now Dogao is going to be the aggressor, Plus one, plus one is in for Bars' skirmishers. No plus one defense just yet for Dogao. Yep, it doesn't really matter in skirm v skirm, but it does help with uh, when archers are involved. So it is a pretty important upgrade to have 
as, well, Togao's army is larger numerically. Yes, it is better, but it's not really in a position to do a whole lot. These lumberjacks on the left side of Barls' base can be a little bit exposed, but, well, other than uh, getting a nice little uh, shot for your... Uh, your new album here in the middle of runestones, and you don't really get a whole lot from being in the middle at this stage. And we will have a slightly better castlage timing for bars. And this is where Kumans could really start using the advantage that you can make a second town center in Feudal Age. Because now you could start making that town center while you're going up. That would allow you to secure that gold mine. So that is something that Dogao needs to be cautious about. And it looks like he's going to fall back, switching into what will be double stable knights in the end. Yep, that is going to be the case, and makes sense. You see scouts, you see skirmishers, might as well go for the stable. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, chat. I was wondering what the heck you were talking about with the score. Uh, was asked to add in the sponsor logos, but that kind of covers up the score. I'll try and get that fixed for the next game. Anyways, now it's uh, Dogao's gold mine that will be pressured here, and even if he's not losing villagers, idle time already hurts because he will need a ton of gold to get the upgrades in and get some knights out at the beginning of Castle Age. Yeah, it's really important to be hitting Castle Age with at least something of a bank. Now, granted, Dogao's is not great, but it's going to be enough for at least a couple, maybe a few knights, and that's all you need to clean up this random army of skirms and scouts. Barl's trying to look for that wood line where he got damage done earlier. Nobody's home anymore. But he's hitting Castle Age, and he's looking to be in a very good spot here in game number one. Trying to focus down the archers here with the remaining skirms. He knows exactly that he's going to lose those skirms. But as he's making camels, he really needs to focus on taking down those archers. Yeah, we actually have uh, Bodkin Arrow being the uh, preferred Castle Age blacksmith upgrade prioritized rather even though he's going for those knights and look at this behind the skirms on the other side you have triple stable camel production here from barls Re this could work out well for bars because the is also adding cav archers and this is the tricky thing here you shouldn't go for cav archers because the camels will perform pretty decently against cav archers not against foot archers if the wants to continue with any kind of archer unit that has to be the foot archers as he's going to get a nice surround on those skirmishers on the right side. Yeah, at this stage we do see humans more or less having access to free husbandry, with their speed bonus being the same value. And all those skirmishers are going to go down. Crossbowman upgrade is almost complete. We don't quite have that plus two defense in yet for Barls, though, so he's going to need to be a little bit careful uh, against those crossbowmen. It's also something to mention that we got 1 minute 29 seconds of T-saddle time for Dogao, only 17 seconds for Bar. So not only did the Dogao lose uh, two villagers, he also had a lot more idle time. So currently, Bars possesses a four villagers lead. Yeah, and that is something that is only going to expand over time as he already has the second town center complete. He even has the horse collar upgrade when his opponent does not. And things are looking pretty nice for our Polish player here. He's getting this nice army of camels. Yes, humans don't have the heavy camel upgrade in Imperial Age, but uh, we ain't there yet. So for the time being, these camels are going to be performing very well. And uh, looks like there is some harassment to the leftover skirmishers on the right side as well. The guy was forced to play very, very defensive here, which pretty much nullifies uh, his chance to go and raid with the cav archers. Although it looks like he's going to send some knights around. But he shouldn't be able to get into the Bars' base here. Nope. We do have the full walls in the 333 HP Palisades with that human team bonus. Market now coming in here for our yellow player. Just going to be to help balance his eco. He has lots of gold in the bank. Just needs to get a bit more food and wood most likely. And he's just in a very stable position, so to say. He's got oh, all the map all... control. Oh, never mind. I lied. Oh, that's that's a big oh, blunder here between for the palisade and the house. Yeah. Luckily for him, he's got camels, so he doesn't need an awful lot to clean this one up. These knights only have plus one defense. He's got a defensive town center on the gold mine. This could have been way worse. Mistakes like this can easily lead to lost games. Anyways, while Bars is distracted chasing down those knights, the cav archers will break out. But it looks like Bars will just ignore that and go for a gold mine. Doga will have to go for all the quick walls. 
Yeah, both players totally on point with their quick ball so far. So no uh, nervous jitters here in game number one as they've they've got everything that they need to do so far. But Dogao down now down twelve villagers. Uh, that's about to be thirteen. Boink. He is going to snipe the siege workshop villager though. Something that helps him uh, make sure. Oh, what are those camos up to? That feels a bit like an overextension. Oh, uh, well, they're just going to be retreating for the time being, snagging another villager. And you can see Dogao with this army of knights and cav archers here at the front of Barls' base, but they're not doing a whole lot other than shooting a farm, causing a tiny bit of vital time, but it's just not the most important thing in the world. Plus two cavalry armor is now coming in for Barls, and just a large army of camels with even a few scorpions, that's going to be more than enough to deal with anything that Dogao throws at him so far. Indeed, and you did mention that basically free husbandry for Cumans, some immensely chasing down early cav archers. Later on, obviously, Hans will get their own husbandry upgrade, but at the beginning of the game, especially if Dogao lost quite a bit at the beginning, he can't afford husbandry, so the camels chase down the cav archers very easily as another villager goes down on the wood line. Oh, but Dogao looking to get some damage done over here. Cav archers going to be able to take high ground, but the knights, they just don't stand up to the camels. And, well, the camels, I guess, are going to die, but now we're going to be having the reinforcements coming in from the back. I don't even know who's trying to sandwich whom at this point. It's just a big old mess, but I feel like this should be decent for Barls. Yeah, this should be decent. Keeping those Cav Archer numbers low is probably number one priority. He also got some very nice Scorpion shots in here. This could have been better for him, but I feel like, given the fact that he has a 13 Villager's lead, he has to be satisfied with this fight. Oh yeah, definitely. My only concern for Barls is that he's not working towards something that's going to be good for him in the long run. The Cav Archers are going to be great for Dogao as the game goes on. Their power scales exponentially, as I'm sure most of you know, having ever played against Huns. Just all those, like, 50 Cav Archers running into your base in late Castle Age. With humans, you don't really have that with this army. The Scorpions, I mean, they're a nice little support unit, but they're not amazing. And the camels, again, no heavy camel upgrade in, in Imperial Age, so we're going to need to see a transition at some point. At this point, if you asked me like five minutes ago what could have been a game plan for bars, I would have said probably just try to pin Dogao inside his base and go for forward castle. Another hole comes in though, and this is much more dangerous than the previous one was. Well, Town Center is going to shoo away the Cav Archers for the time being. Just getting a couple villager kills here and there. I mean, you'll take what you can get at this point. But right now, these archery ranges are on their way to the rubble stage. And that's going to be a huge issue. Because if your production is bottlenecked, then you're just going to fall behind further and further. And your opponent's already at your base. And then you're looking at just getting completely just snowballed out of control. Indeed, and... and this is rough. Dogao took a gamble pushing up with the cav archers here. And honestly, this gamble so far isn't paying off because... Boris still only has lost six villagers, and in exchange now he's destroying both ranges. And if the ranges are down, no more cav archers for Dogao, and he's already in a very, very rough spot military-wise. Indeed. Well, okay, Monk's gonna try and go for a conversion, actually a conversion back in this case. The cav archer numbers, though, at home, they're not that high. There's only 12 of them. And this ram is knocking at this completely useless house for Huns. <laughs> But still, it, uh, it's very uncomfortable. It is more than uncomf uncomfortable here for Dogao, especially because he's still only two TCs, whereas his opponent is on three. So there's a steady eco lead as well for Bars. Plus, he probably also has better eco efficiency because he's forced to run way less than his opponent. Now he's mining stone for a castle. He's got six on stone, 200 in the bank for the time being, but that's a nice Mangonel hit. It's Nags a Scorpion, and there goes the Ram. Mangonel's going to drop, though, but here come the Cav Archers, and this is exactly what I was saying. We're at 38 Cav Archers here, and they're just going to start to scale so, so well as we get further in, into the Castle Age. They definitely will. They do have uh, Bloodlines and plus one defense. Notably, though, they don't have either Tumbering or Ballistics, so there's still sort of that window for bars to potentially take a decisive fight before this gets way worse. It's going to be tricky, though. The Cav Archers are almost 2-1 to one in terms of numbers advantage, and you can't really take that with Camels. Yes, you do a lot more damage, yes, you're faster, but you do lack the Pierce Armor that Knights do. And now we're going to be seeing the old hit-and-run tactics. 
as Barls is trying to dance around over here. The Scorpion adding nice consistent damage from the back, but it's it's still not going to be something that's so great in the long run. Indeed. And many of those camos already heavily damaged here, so this is going to be harder and harder for Bars. He's mining stone really heavily, though. So if he can secure for a position for a castle, that could uh, potentially seal the deal for him here, because now the camos are getting close, and many of those cam arches are also heavily damaged. Yeah, not having husbandry, I believe, Dogao, uh, it's a pretty big issue for him, as the camels are able to pursue them much more easily, and yet... When the dust is settling, Dogao has a very comfortable military lead, even though he is down like 20-some villagers. Dogao is also running out of his primary gold here. He does have a goldman on the right side. As uh, for now, Bars is going to start adding mangonels. Many of those archers are weak for Dogao. And I think at this point, Bars just needs a map control style castle, play defensive, go into Imperial and just play mass cavalier. Well... It's, uh, I think that's a pretty reasonable option. There's nothing with Dogao that's set up to go for Halbs or anything like that, so just going for the heavy cavalry play should be perfectly fine. Uh, Bosa coming in perhaps a little bit late, but not really the end of the world. And Dogao's gonna try and go for another counterattack. Yeah, I have a big deja vu about this one. Cavalry's moving in towards Bars' base, and Bars would just go knock on the doors. This is probably the best use of your army right now for Bars, just force Dogao to defend with Cav Archers, because Cav Archers are meant to raid and use their mobility, not to just sit back in your base. And that's a forward castle from Bars. It could go even more deeper into the base of Dogao. Any deeper, and it would really be a get-out-of-my-game castle, but right now, Barls, he knows he has the map control advantage, but he's getting very heavily raided at home. This could be a bit uncomfortable. The castle's getting closer and closer to completion, though. And, of course, you can add in some Kipchoks if you want. They're going to be doing okay against Cav Archers. Other cav archers, rather. But really, it's just all about the positioning. And this castle is just so powerful. Indeed. And Bars, I feel like he could have gone for an even more aggressive castle. And I think he has to be satisfied with the fact that he's losing a couple of wills. He still has a massive eco lead. But now, his position on the map is much, much stronger than his opponent's one. Exactly. He is just knocking at the door of Dogao, even taking his wood line in a show of dominance. Or just trying to get those villagers to work. One of the two. Oh, and he now gets the Cav Archers. And now those Cav Archers have nowhere to go. Well, they're trying to run away, but so many have fallen already. 24 Cav Archers to 12 Camels. I mean, it's still okay. The reinforcements are trying to come in, but they will only find a bunch of corpses. And be very sad. And the longer the game goes, the better it is for Bars. He is now... Only mining stone with one villager, so there is not going to be a second castle coming up for him. But now I think he's in a commanding position. Because Dogout needs to make something happen here in Castle Age, as he is almost certainly going to get beaten to Imperial. Most likely. It's going to be... Pr well, I mean... The, the resources are kind of similar between the two players. Dogao has the buildings, and he's just trying to hang in there. Ballistics coming in, and once these Cav Archers get more upgrades, they're going to start to become more powerful. And this castle, although it's a great position from which to push, it's not denying any important resources. Yeah, it denies the main stone, but Huns don't really care that much about having lots of castles. Now Bars is back on stone, though. I did mention that I think this castle, as you said, is a very good staging point for an assault. However, it's not actually damaging Dogao right now very heavily, so you need a second castle to follow it up with. Potentially close to the starting TC of Dogao, or potentially close to the stables ranges so he can destroy those buildings. As we see Imperial Age on the way for Bars alongside some light calves, so Hussar spam could become a reality soon. Yeah, remember, humans have that unique tech Step Husbandry, which makes your light cav, cav archers, and uh, Step Lancers train super fast. You really, uh... You put the spam into a uh, Hussar spam, it's really powerful, and it can just completely tear apart your opponent, especially if they're Huns and they're very, very open like Dogao is. Map control advantage heavily in the favor of Bars as well, so we have to keep in mind that every single Cav Archer Dogao loses is going to be harder and harder to replenish because he's running out of gold. Plus, a sneaky stable on the far left for Bars will allow him to start trading the left of Dogao's base, and the right is already getting raided by some light Cav. That said, look at the army count, Lita. 
It's only 11 for Barls. Yeah, he's making lots of Light Cav, but Light Cav aren't the scariest unit in the world. And now Dogao's grabbing Thumb Ring. He's going to have pretty much full upgrades for these Cav Archers. Yeah, that's still a very scary group of Cav Archers. Um, Bars will need Heavy Cavalry in Imperial here, so I don't think Light Cav is going to crack it. Plus four Defense Knights should be more than enough here, especially because it doesn't need to chase down those Cav Archers. Just have 25 Cavaliers and dive beneath the Town Center and destroy it. But he's not getting any of that. He's just making camels and more light cav. Beautiful trap from Bars inside his base. Dogao tried to escape through the hole that was still there. Bars goes in with a house and trapped those cav archers in there. Well, Barl's also trying to continuously raid Dogao on the right side. Really love the diligence of that. And now we have Imperial Age in here for our yellow player. Plate Barding Armor comes in right away. And look how he's Bars relentless at this castle. rating. And look at this. Second castle coming in in a very, very defensive position for Bars. So he knows exactly, okay, I'm up to Imperial. All I need to make sure is that I don't lose my entire economy to Cav Archers like that is happening on the far left. <laughs> exactly. But on the right side, it's all about this Light Cav rating. And yeah, you can see the damage. It was more or less even just like a second ago, but now it's just rocketing in favor of Barls. He's just killing so many villagers. He's almost at 45 right now. He's already getting the stable set up on the left side as well. And oh man, this could be getting out of control very quickly in favor of Barls. Indeed, there's 50 farmers for uh, Bars here. Dogao does have the food to click up to Imperial, but he will just get constantly raided. And defending against raids when your Cav Archer civilization is not super easy because you want to keep like one big group of cav archers so that you can take good fights with them or you can use them in smaller groups as well to raid but it's definitely not ideal that you have to send them back home and just sit beneath the town center cleaning up light cav well and that is going to be it whoops barls takes game number one it's his first win of the tournament guys indeed and an extremely important win over here because Whoever loses this set pretty much has no mathematical chance to get into the quarterfinals. Whoever wins here still keeps the hope alive. It's going to be a small hope because uh, all the other players are performing so, so well. But Bars trying to make a case for himself over here. Uh, at least trying to win a set in tournament even if he cannot get into the quarterfinals. But very nice game at the beginning here from Bars as... Uh, the early aggressiveness paid off, and we could talk about that tower here for a moment. Because that defensive tower delayed Dogao's town centers quite a bit, and that contributed very heavily to him falling behind in economy. Yeah, e exactly. You're just not being able to add those extra town centers. It matters a lot. On some maps in Empire Wars, it's not that big of a deal. Because, okay, everyone's just going 1TC aggression all the time. But not the case on Runestones. It's a map that is defensive enough that you are seeing those extra town centers pretty often. Indeed. The other two remaining uh, maps that we will have today is uh, Wade and Frigid Lake. Huns and Kumans now used up by Dogao and Bars. We haven't talked about the civilization draft just yet. Bars has Saracens, Indians, Byzantines available, whereas for Dogao it's Ethiopians, Chinese, and Bulgarians left. Yeah, so I mean the overall civilization picks are nothing too wild. Lots of stuff that we've seen in Empire Wars so far. The Civ bands were interestingly Franks and Berbers, so not wanting to go with uh, all of those uh, Cav Knight spam. The maps, by the way, are going to be Frigid Lake for Barls is his home map, and Wade is going to be the next map here for Dogao. So, Lita, what do you think we'll be seeing as we wade into the next game? Ooh, it's hard to say. Wade seemed to be a pretty defensive map, so I feel like Bulgarians would be a bit of a surprise there for me. Either Chinese or Ethiopians can work nicely. We have seen Bohemians used yesterday as well. I feel like Ethiopians, just as a general purpose good archer sif, could be reasonable for Wade. But I can see Chinese working as well. Bulgarians is not impossible, especially if you want to secure the middle using Krayposts. But I feel like you probably keep Bulgarians for a little bit more of an open map style. And since this Frigid Lake generation is more open than it was in the previous Red Bulls, I can see Bulgarians working there. 
Well, other side. We shall see as we're getting into the next game. All right. They don't give us time to evaluate. No, uh, there's no rest. Civilizations. No right. dark age. No, no nothing. We, we could just go, 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 go here. But so launching in to Shelby. Oh, nice. My I uh I I eyeballed the uh, <laughs> changing the uh, sponsor overlay, and it looks like we can see the scores now. So uh, don't worry, chat. Orin Lou's got your back. So we're here in game number two on Wade. This is literally Dogao's last chance in the entire Red Bull Wololo 5 tournament. He's going to be the Red Ethiopians to the south on his home map of Wade and borrows the Yellow Byzantines to the north. An interesting civilization matchup, certainly, as Ethiopians is just an absolutely amazing Empire War civilization, as we'll have a scouts opening from Dogao, somewhat unconventional, with Ethiopians. But if you're up against Byzantines that could just go skirmishers at the beginning, it could make sense. And I kind of feel like, while Byzantines are not an amazing civilization for this map, it's more about sort of counterpicking the Ethiopians. I mean, Byzantines, they I actually think they're pretty good here. One, they are good, pretty good against Ethiopians. Ethiopians like making lots of crossbowmen. Byzantines have those cheap skirmishers to help deal with those. You have the cheaper Imperial Age can help nullify any sort of timing Ethiopians try and go for. And then you are really strong with your defenses, taking control of the middle of the map with all of that gold, and are even not that reliant on gold yourself. So I actually really like Byzantines here. Uh, Dogao is going to wall off his starting base right at the beginning here, already going for an archer range. Whereas on the other side, Bars did place his archer range close to his mill, so he was prepared for archers to push his berries and hunt. But not Notably the scouts that are in his base, as he has already lost two villagers and the third one is on the way. Nope. Scout will save the... or Spearman will save the villagers for the time being. And it looks like Barls, I mean, he's going to be getting himself... Oh man, the scouts even escape. Oh, that feels bad, man. Yeah, that feels really bad. This is why oftentimes you could surprise your opponent with uh, Ethiopian scouts. They're not particularly amazing, it's more about the element of surprise, because you don't anticipate the Ethiopians opening with scouts here. On the other side, though, looks like the Vols aren't finished either for Dogao, and a Spearman, a Scout, an Archer, and two Skirms get into the base of Dogao. That sounds Could like a bad it. joke, like, a Spearman, <laughs> an Archer, two Skirms, and a Scout walk into a bar. <laughs> they find the Mangudai, who asks why there's no counter. There we go. That, that's how you finish that joke. No. All right. My goodness, that, that was horrible. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, notably, Dogao didn't lose a single villager. He saved the one HP will uh, and cleaned up that entire army. So that was absolutely textbook defense there for Dogao, who already has sort of the economical lead with Ethiopians compared to Byzantines, and he also now possesses a two villagers lead. Although Barrels with literally zero seconds idle TC time. I know we're still very early in the game, but zero seconds. Feels good, man. But it seems like eh, things are going to be a bit more passive. There's a little bit of, of light pressure here on the right side of Dogao's base, but I don't think it's going to be anything that's too impactful. Archer and Skirm numbers are just slowly going to be climbing, and I think the question that we need to ask as we get closer to towards Castle Age in mid-game is, how are they going to balance their Archer versus Skirmisher numbers? Because obviously Crossbowmen are the much more powerful unit, but Skirmishers counter the Crossbowmen, as we now have Barrels clicking up. Indeed, he is the first one to click up to Castle Age. Dogao invested a lot more into his Archers, so obviously it's going to be a little bit delayed. And uh, neither of the players decided to take any of the elephants, which could have had uh, a pretty decent effect on their economy early on. Are you surprised about that? Uh, well, we see that with Berbers, with the faster moving villagers, and I don't know, maybe like Mongols if they have hunt or something like that. But it seems like the risk of you know losing a villager early on, or maybe uh, getting it picked off by enemy units as well as the the rampaging elephant, it, it could be enough to deter them. But still. It's not the biggest of deals ever, as now we have Dogao clicking on up to Castle Age. Still, we could be seeing around a minute and 10 seconds-ish advantage for Barls, where you can make something happen. Speaking of making something happen, Dogao's archers now hit the Bars' gold mine here, and that's already one villager down, make it two, just adding to the pain of Bars over here. 
Yeah, we're now looking at four villagers down in total, four barrels. Dogat with actually 14 kills to four deaths, really making those Ethiopian archers work in feudal age here. And even if uh, Bars will have the castle age advantage, he will have elite skirms, but elite skirms are not necessarily a scary unit in comparison to, like, let's say crossbows or knights. Speaking of knights, Dogao will go for a second stable, so there will be a decent amount of knights coming in. Ethiopian knights, again, they're not good, but you're in a situation, if you're Dogao, where you just, you want knights. Your opponent's making almost purely skirmishers. Knights are going to do the trick. Even, it doesn't matter if you don't have bloodlines. Knights are still knights. Pro analysis right there. Uh, there is Elite Skirm and Botkin Arrow coming in here for Barls. Trying to push the back of Dogao's wood line, but this is where those Skirms will struggle really badly getting through those walls. So, bit of an annoyance here for Dogao, but not something that he has to be scared about. Yeah, and on the flip side, we have Barls who has to be pretty scared, especially as he sees Dogao hit Castle Age. You get the extra food and gold as Ethiopians. Uh, already able to spend that right away on Crossbowman and Bodkin Arrow. And there are some elite skirmishers in, but they don't have plus two defense just yet. So once Crossbow and Bodkin come in for Dogao, it's, it could still be pretty scary. It certainly could be. Elite skirms are chasing down the army on the north. And as you mentioned, there will be knights. They only have plus one defense here, no bloodlines. But against full skirmishers, that's also perfectly fine. Yeah, it, it's not the biggest of deals. Now we're going to have Dogao diving into these skirmishers, abusing the fact that they have minimum range. Well somewhat doing that and it should be a pretty nice cleanup here and Barls is going to need to come up with some sort of answers now we have Crossbone pushing at the front and then the army that is not actually cleaned up is going to push in from the side and Dogao's just trying to be everywhere and he is actually everywhere three spearmen probably won't hold four knights back over here uh, even though the knights don't have plus two defense so the skirmishers actually deal a decent amount of damage on them but four should be enough to clean this one up yeah, I mean, it's just not enough skirmishers here. And right now, Barls is kind of getting picked apart by Dogao. Skirmishers coming in near the crossbow. And plus two defense is 30 seconds away from completion, though. Oh, but Dogao could be getting a little bit sandwiched over here between the two groups of elite skirmishers from Barls. And that exactly seems to be Barls' plan. And that's a perfect surround there. Skirmishers closing the distance. No ballistics on either side, so that helps uh, Dogao escape here. And... Honestly, given the circumstances, only losing two crossbows here is uh, almost a miracle. Yeah, it's uh, nice control him, nice little splits right there. No ballistics helps a lot. And plus two defense is going to come in, and we have a grand total of one spearman to deal with these seven knights that are going to have plus two defense. That's going to be pretty darn rough, as uh, those stray units from the left side are still preventing this full wall here from Barl's. Dugau, first player to add an additional TC on his gold to the left side as well. And, oh man, those skirmishers are going to be very sad very soon. They indeed will be. There is just nothing that uh, Bars has against knights. Not a monastery, not a single camel. And he's just trying to focus down the crossbows over here. But this already feels uh, like a very, very sad fight for Bars. Trying to run as best he can with these skirmishers. He's making a transition into crossbowmen behind it, as the crossbowmen will be able to deal with the knights once they get to good enough numbers. And, uh, I mean, it's a decentish choke point, and Dogao feels scared enough to run away for the time being. But, oh, uh, man, now the gold at the front is just being harassed by Dogao once again. And it just feels like Barls is just scrambling to stay alive instead of being able to do anything that he actually wants to. And you did mention the stray units on the left side. This is why it's so impactful. It's denying the backup gold mine of Bars. So not only did he lose his primary gold on the front, his backup gold mine is being denied. So currently he is without gold income. Exactly. And on this map, you have three gold mines at home, like normal, but they are smaller. And the, you know, the third one here for Barls, it's way to the left. So that's inaccessible for the time being. Ballistics coming in for Dugao as well, going for Knights plus Crossbowmen. Are we watching a 2v2 right now? I mean, Dogao did just win the last 2v2 tournament. Uh, he didn't. <laughs> didn't? Oh, no, he got second place. My bad. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know why I should know these tournaments, man. <laughs> Anyways, Boris doesn't really focus that much on cleaning up those stray units to the north of his base. He could send free skirmishers and easily clean that up. But for now, he is moving to the middle. He does have a 5 on stone, so he could technically afford a TC right now in the middle to secure the middle and just prevent Dogao from accessing that. But on the other hand, 
what if he's thinking about the castle? It could be really scary, and right now, the knights are just pressuring these crossbowmen and skirmishers like crazy. The n Numerically, the armies are very similar, but the value is significantly in favor of Dogao here, as these knights are just chopping away at these archer units. Yeah, there are three ranges here, but now we're going to start to camp the production pretty soon. I think Dogao should commit to this, and that's exactly what he's doing. Even going to send the crossbowmen to the left side while all of these ranged units on the right are distracted, and that's going to be a lot more dead villagers on the gold mine, especially with ballistics in. Indeed. Ooh. Behind this one. Ooh. That's a nice little nook right there for Barls. <laughs> but no, it's not enough, as Dogao will win at game number two, tying things right back up. Exactly. This was... Uh... Pretty much a stomp here. I don't think that there was any moment where I was like, okay, Bars has a pretty convincing lead. This was just Dogao all over the place. Ethiopians, probably the better Empire War Civ among the two, but it was also about the execution of Dogao, closing the game with 61 kills and only 26 losses. Yeah, that's pretty bonkers, honestly. Oh, there we go. Yeah, 2.35 KDR. That is uh, that is really impressive, especially since you know the he didn't he actually trained fewer units than his opponent. It's just getting all that much more value out of them. Gathered a thousand more resources in total. That's not really the biggest story though. It's just how Dogao was able to take those fights. And on the one side, it is micro. I mean, he had amazing micro in that fight, but uh, on those fights rather. But on the other hand, it's just where he was positioning his units. It's like he was always striking where Barls was not able to defend comfortably. And on the flip side, he was just able to defend at home without taking any damage. Indeed. And with that, they are already set for game number three here. We are going to Frigid Lake into an Indians versus Chinese matchup. Okay, man, they are really not giving us any time. So, Indians versus Chinese, how do you feel about this matchup over here on Frigid Lake? Well, let's get into the game. Here we are. So, yeah, game number three here. Loser of this game is out of the tournament. Feels like, you know, the tournament just started, man, and already one of these guys is going to be out. But Barls, this is his home map. He won Arabia. He's going to be the Yellow Indians to the east and to the west in the red, as the Chinese will be Dogao. And you asked me about this matchup, Lidacor. I actually think this on this map, Indians might have a decent shot. Yeah, Indians are a very underappreciated 1v1 civilization. Many are saying that the extra pierce armor on their uh, light cav early on is very nice, and their full camo play is very scared, could easily snowball out of control, because the camos can also destroy buildings with the building attack bonus that the Indians have. So it's not like you're just going to sit behind walls and buildings when you are defending against Indian camels, because Indian camels won't care. They certainly won't, as uh, those guys can tear through buildings very quickly. Looks like we have an, a scout opening here from Dogao. Chinese, I know it's a sieve that Dogao loves to play, but in Empire Wars, they don't really get as much of an advantage because you don't start with your extra villagers and you don't start with your, uh, your negative resources. But still, you want the extra villagers when you can get them. And it's just like Chinese are missing a huge part of what makes them good. That is uh, indeed true. That being said, they are still an absolutely amazing civilization. Super diverse tech tree. Very good cavalry play and very strong archer play. Um, their farms obviously benefit from the extra food on them. Cheaper technologies. So, I mean, Chinese is still probably a top 8 Empire Wars civilization. It's just a matter of they're not as strong as they could possibly be in uh, random map scenarios. As Bars is getting a dock up and takes some shore fish here. Well, it's actually deep fish, but the villager is able to take it, so it pretty much counts for shore fishing. Something that Indians have a pretty considerable bonus on. Uh, it's 10%. It, it's a nice little bonus. It's not as strong as it used to be. Uh, especially when they had the extra carry capacity too. But still, it combines with having cheaper villagers. Like, faster food income and cheaper villagers just means that you can uh, you can afford lots of food-intensive units, make army and make economy at the same time. And right now, Barls is the one with almost double the military count of his opponent. 
indeed he is. Dogao is uh, just now finished with all the food beneath his town center, so he will have to transition to farming eco. Same thing for Bars, and Bars has a pretty decent amount of idle time beneath his TC. Yeah, that's never super ideal. We already have our farms being placed in a nice little quadrant for Barls. But looks like... Let's see, second range coming in here for Dogao. Just want to make that transition over into archers. Chinese, you can go for cavalry, archers, infantry, whatever you want, really. But archers are still probably going to be your safest bet. And especially against Indians, you don't want to be going for cavalry. So crossbow and play makes all the sense in the world here. Indeed it does, especially because Indians struggle quite badly against foot archers unless they go heavy on the light cavalry front, which could be an idea for Bars. Bars is not finished with the walls back at home, unlike Dogao, so it's going to be a lot harder for Bars to get into the opponent's base compared to Dogao. But, you know, Barls is happily fishing away over here with the villager and fishing ships working in tandem. That villager's like, why don't I get to ride the fishing ship? Why do I have to walk back and forth? Really got the short end of the stick there. Touching coming in here for Dogao, who apparently finds the opening on the right side of Bars' base, and this could be a little bit scary here for a yellow player. Yeah, the two scouts, they're not the, you know, the scariest units in the world, but it's the archers and spearmen that are coming in from behind. Whoa, Dogao actually losing a scout to the spearmen right there. Not particularly ideal, but he's got some skirmishers right now, and with that scout at around half HP, eh, it looks like Dogao is going to be deflected for the time being. Uh, looks like he is planning to go into Castle H here, adds a defensive tower on the gold, not something that Bars had to do. So once again, it's going to be easier for Bars to add town centers compared to his opponent. Yeah, and that could be a very relevant factor, as this is another map where we see players throw down those extra town centers pretty frequently. And something that I find interesting is that Bars actually invested into Wheelbarrow. And this actually makes sense because your villagers are having to walk further to get to the mill. Because you're, you know, you're not able to build farms around the TC because uh, you can't build farms in swamps. So that actually makes a lot of sense. It certainly does. Bars also takes a pretty decent fight in the middle over here. That fire galley doesn't seem like it's a significant thing, but it definitely can help absorb arrow fire and just act as a big tank over here. 100 HP with four pierce armor is actually brutal for a feudal age unit if you compare it to what land units can give you. 